This is the comprehensive problem from chapter 2, problem number 2-18 in your book. And the problem says um, that there are various cost and sales data from Marywell Company for the just completed year that appear in the worksheet below. So this is the year-end worksheet from the problem. And so they have the information listed out here. Um, it also says in the problem that of the $105,000 in manufacturing overhead, $15,000 is variable and $90,000 is fixed. Number one says prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Number two says prepare an income statement. Number three says assume that the company produced equivalent of 10,000 units of product during this year just completed. What was the average cost per unit for direct materials? What was the average cost per unit for fixed manufacturing overhead. Then you assume that the company is going to produce 15,000 units of the product next year. What average cost per unit and what total cost would you expect for direct materials at this level of activity and for fixed manufacturing overhead? Assume that direct materials is a variable cost. As the manager responsible for product costs, production costs, explain to the president any differences in average cost between, per unit between three and four. All right, lots of things going on here. The very first thing that we want to do is set up our schedule of cost of goods manufactured because we need to do this before we create an income statement. So, um, step one. It is Marywell Company schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Right. So we're going to create our schedule. Make this pretty. All right. So the very first thing we're going to do again is start with direct materials. <clears throat> Since we are in a manufacturing setting, we would begin with raw materials, inventory, uh, beginning. I'm sorry, beginning raw materials inventory. So. Up above was listed our beginning raw materials inventory. And that was beginning $9,000. Now I'm linking this because I already typed the information in Excel. So if you're creating your own, you can just start by typing. That's fine. And then we add, again, we start with beginning, then we always add our purchases. Purchases, raw materials. Uh, raw materials. So what's our purchases of raw materials? All right, and then this, this total is our raw materials available for use. And we're going to add these together. Make it a nice little line above there. All right, and then we need to subtract out our ending inventory. That's raw ending raw materials. And this is taken from above raw materials and then inventory six thousand dollars. So this total is called raw materials used in production. This was all the raw materials used in production, and that equals our available minus ending inventory. All right, let's make this one bigger so you can see the number. All right. A little bottom line here. Okay, then to get to our manufacturing costs, we add direct labor. Direct labor. Direct labor. And then we add manufacturing overhead. 
coming back for the pair of hundred five thousand. And this is a total manufacturing cost. For the sum of all of this, we'll add this together. Put a little line here. All right. Then we add work in progress or whip beginning inventory. So our whip beginning inventory whip and then add this total. Alright. Then we subtract whip ending inventory. All right. And this is our cost of goods manufactured. of our scenario. Okay, so this is step one in our process. This is the answer to number one here, prepare a scheduled cost of goods manufactured. Now, step two asks us to prepare the income statement. So, I'm just going to copy this down here. And do step two, prepare income statement. Marywell Company, we're going to call this income statement for a year ending December 31st, 2012. Alright, this is bold. Let's just pass this through. Okay, so let's so start of our income statement. Remember, we always start with sales. And our sales was, I'm going to take this again from the information given in the problem, 500000 And then we subtract out our cost of goods sold. Now, remember up here, this is cost of goods manufactured. That's not actually our cost of goods sold. We must now use that number to get to the cost of goods manufactured. And we start by taking beginning finished goods inventory this is listed above let's find our beginning finished goods inventory finished goods beginning inventory and we add cost of goods manufactured which we found in the schedule above I'll take that number. And this is goods available for sale. Then remember we need to subtract out ending finish good inventory. That equals, take it from up here, 40,000. Alright, so this gives us equals this minus this. That is our cost of goods manufactured, cost of goods sold. And this is our gross margin. Our gross margin is sales minus cost of goods sold. And then we take out selling
selling and admin expenses. All right. So what do we have for selling and admin? We have selling expense. Let's list it up top. And then we have administrative expenses. And that's also listed up top here. Admin expenses. And the total of that equals. And when we subtract that out, it's from net operating income. And there it is, our net operating income, $40,000. So this was step two. Now, step three means we need to figure out, um, we assume that they produced 10,000 units this year. What was the average cost for, per unit for direct materials? What was the average cost per unit for fixed manufacturing overhead? Remember, fixed is 90,000, variable was 15,000. So, step three, direct materials. So, our direct materials Direct materials. So our direct materials were right here. Raw materials used in production. That's what we had for direct materials this year. And then it says we had number of units, 10,000. So this is not a dollar sign, so I'm going to take that off and make this a number. So our cost per unit is 128,000 divided by the 10,000 units. That is our cost per unit for direct materials. Now, manufacturing overhead. So we have fixed manufacturing overhead. And it's not, it's just written above. So they said that that was 90,000. And again, our number of units were 10,000 for the year. And our cost per unit for fixed manufacturing overhead is 90,000 divided by 10,000 or nine dollars per unit. So this is the answer to number three. Now number four, and this happens a lot as a cost accountant, you really take the information and then you make projections about next year. So they want to know, problem says, assume that the company expects 15,000 units during the next year. What is the average cost per unit for direct materials? What is the total cost per unit? Well, the average cost for direct material is going to be the same because if it's a variable cost, it's not going to change per unit. So it's $12.80. It is what we figured out. I'll just leave it. Cost per unit. Now, total direct materials cost. Um, number of units. So we need to put in the number of units, which is 15,000. Oops, 15. I can't, I'm having typo problems. 15,000, this is units, so I'm not going to put the dollar sign. And so our total direct material cost for next year, estimated, would be our cost per unit times our number of units. So our total material cost, direct material cost is 192000 Now that is more than last year, 128, but that's because we produced 5,000 more units. And a variable cost, the total cost will vary.
but the cost per unit won't vary. Alright, now what about fixed manufacturing overhead? Fixed manufacturing overhead. It's going to still be 90,000, so it's fixed. Number of units is 15,000. And cost per unit now equals 90,000 divided by 15,000. It's six dollars. So, oops, sorry. Cost in a fixed cost, cost per unit, total cost is constant. Cost per unit varies. All right. So the very last problem, step five, says explain any differences. All right. So remember that the variable cost per unit remain the same, but total cost for a variable cost will change. So, um, the total cost is different in step five. In step four, the total cost is different. So therefore, this total cost is different because we produce more units. Therefore, total cost per unit, the cost per unit for direct material remains unchanged from 3 to 4, but total cost change direct material cost change because the number of units increased. As for fixed manufacturing overhead, the total cost remain unchanged or fixed, but the cost per unit of fixed manufacturing overhead changes less because the number of units increased. And the real reason is, think about it, if we have a building or overhead that costs $90,000 and last year we produced 10 units, 10,000 units, then when we divide by 10,000, we get 9 here, right? But if we actually manufacture $5,000 more, the fix doesn't change, but the per unit cost goes down because we're producing more units. Therefore, we're spreading this cost over more units. And that is a comprehensive problem number 2-18 in your book from two, chapter 2.